Okay, folks, you just heard another track of the fabulous new album from 7HY, the album, of course, being No Place in Heaven. And joining me on the line to chat about that and various other things is Mr. Sean Pallada. Welcome to Firebrand Rock Radio. Thanks so much, Dan. Thanks for having me. Well, I'll say it's about time we did have a chat because we've known each other for um, oh, quite a few years now, it has to be said. Yes, it, it, I would say at least five, six, maybe seven years. It's been a long time. It has. And I've got to say, what a fantastic uh, album the new 7HY album is. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So I'll start off by asking you, how did you get involved in it? Um. Wow. Probably about the same amount of time, probably um, six or seven years ago, I just became buddies with uh, Alan online. Um, back in the MySpace days, actually, so that was a while back. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it was it, it was probably wasn't maybe a year or so after the first Line of Fire record came out. We just got to talking and chatting, and he had even mentioned back then that he was writing some songs, and if I'd be interested in singing them, and I was, of course, I'd be I'd be crazy to have said no, <laughs> you know. So I uh, I told him back then that yeah, and they just circumstances things happening. It just took this long, I guess, to get around to it. Well, probably it's it's a good thing in some ways because of the uh, sort of resurgence in rock that I keep bringing up in seems to be every interview that uh, you seem to have um, probably hit the market at just the right time. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. You know, we 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 feel like it turned out really good, and uh, initial response has been really really good. We're very pleased with that. So yeah, we're hoping that we're uh, we're hoping that the timing is good. Well, obviously, Alan's been uh, seeding the album all over um, Facebook for his uh, his heart's content, and there is, a... <laughs> but that's a good yeah. thing because it, it there has been an awful lot of interest already for this. There really has. There really has. There's been a lot of the the, the one song that we've put out. Everybody that's heard it seems to really really like it, and not, not a day goes by that we don't get some sort of message or email or something about it. People seem to really like it. Well, obviously, with the likes of uh, of Alan um, coming from uh, Shy, etc., obviously there is that there is that background um, from the yeah. two guys coming from Shy. That there is that sort of you know, obviously Britain being the home market, and we have got a bit of a soft spot for that band. Yeah, well, they're, they were a great band. I mean, Shy was fantastic. I actually came into Shy kind of late. Um, my my line of fire guitar player Nikki, uh, back in the late nineties. Uh, he had excess all areas, and that was the first I had heard it, and I was like, "Wow, these guys are good," <laughs> you know. So when Alan came along and was like, "I want you to sing on something," that's why I said I'd, I'd be crazy to say no to that. So yeah, it, it, I, I had a great time. Well, I mean, I was lucky. I mean, I saw them oh probably four or five times um, back wow. in the eighties. Yeah, at places like the Marquee, etc. So um, I, I was in the right well, place, I think, really. Yeah, you are lucky. I would have loved to have seen that. Yeah, I, 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 it's just, it just shows how old I am, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. I'm up there. I, I'm probably older than you think I am, so it's all good. <laughs> Well, let's just touch on some other things. Obviously, uh, other stuff you've been involved with. Obviously, I got to know you through, obviously, um, well, starting off the first Line of Fire album, which obviously we were discussing just before um, we came on air. And I can't believe yeah. that's 2005 that came out. 2005, yeah, that, that's crazy. And Nikki and I were talking the other, um, well, I should say the other day, it was probably a few weeks back now that, you know, Line of Fire as an entity has existed for a little over 10 years, and it's just like, wow, it's been 10 years already. But yeah, that first record was 2005, and, and um, it, it's weird because some people still seem to be discovering it, so that's a good thing. Well, that is strange, because I mean, when it, what year did Momentum come out? Uh, 2010. 2010. So it's, it's about time you guys did another hour then, really. You're being a bit lazy. Yeah, we are. We're we're a bunch of lazy, lazy <laughs> company boys. It's okay. <laughs> are there well, any yeah, plans? Well, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Are there any plans to well, do another line of fire? Uh, there's always plans, you know. But what you know? What's that old? What's that old joke? You want to hear God laugh? Telling your plans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. There's always plans. There's always songs. Uh, Nikki, Nikki, as always, has a wealth of material. Uh, he and I write really well together, and we have, we probably have, 
you know, maybe I'm saying too much. We probably have 10, 12 songs in various stages of completion uh, for the purpose of another Line of Fire record. Uh, we just don't know when we're going to get around to that at this point. You know, we, we came off of Melodic Rock Fest last September, mm. you know, on a real high. We were real, we were real excited about that, and things just kind of, you know, took a turn not long after that. So, you know, we had a lot of plans, but, you know, like I said, things don't always work out the way you plan them to. So hopefully sooner than later we'll be able to work on that third one. But there, there, is, there is music there for it. So how did you go down at Melody Rock Fest? Obviously, I mean, I always look at that as being sort of the American equivalent of Fire Fest, really. Yeah, 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 to an extent it really is. Um, we, you know, just... I don't even know how that happened, actually. I was just talking to, because, you know, it's a it, it joint venture between, uh, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, Andrew and John Kibble. Indeed. And uh, I was just chatting with John Kibble one day, and, you know, next thing you know, we're on the lineup. So, <laughs> you know, it was really kind of quick. Uh, and he, he put us on for an acoustic slot, and we took it, and then we spent the next several months getting ready for it, you know? It was a great time, though. It was it was so it was great just to be in the atmosphere with all the bands and all the fans, and that's why I said we we came off of that experience really fired up, so to speak, you know, for Line of Fire, and uh, we were really hoping to have some have you know have some more shows and, and keep things going from that. But we just you know different things happen, and things happen you can't control sometimes, you know. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Well, that was a great time. It was a Andrew put on a great, great fest, and he, you know, of course, coming up again in September this year or October, I think it is. I'm not really sure, but uh, it's he's he's doing a great job. People really seem to like it. Well, both uh, both Andrew McNeeson, obviously, uh, Mr. Kibble, have done uh, an awful lot for the scene. It has to be said. Yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's there's no question about that. One other band, of course, you were involved with for one album, was, of course, was Talon. Talon, yeah. How did you get involved with those guys? Because, obviously, um, you were on the last album they did, which was, uh, if memory serves me correctly, was Three. Yeah, I called Three, yeah. Um, that was, I think, man, I'm going back to, like, 2009. Let me think for a second. Uh, I think that was Eric Ranio got me involved in that because uh, Eric and I have known each other it's like you know how it is online like you and I have known each other for several years you know and I've known Eric for several years and well uh, Eric I always refer to as the Swiss Army knife of uh, keyboards that's exactly we, right we, we have this standing joke Eric and I that uh, it's easy to name the albums he's not on <laughs> <laughs> there you go that's exactly right and me and Eric did a song together uh, on the uh, on a Liberty and Justice album and uh oh, of course they, yes indeed yeah yeah a song called for better or worse and we just know each other and he and i we tried different things putting putting projects together you know but you know how things go and then just talon needed a singer and he's a, he just suggested me you know so he put me in contact with um john parker the drummer and it just it just took off from there well of course there was another great singer on that album as well was of course mr scott soto was involved yeah, Jeff was on that. He did a great job, too. Yeah, he's a, he's a fabulous vocalist. I literally obviously saw him only a few weeks ago at uh, out in Milan, and, I mean, what a storming set he did. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, too much he, energy, that man. Far too much energy. I don't know I don't know where he gets it from. No, damned I, if I do. I really do. I don't know where he gets it from. You know, I saw him in Chicago, and he put on a great show. I mean, I've been lucky. I mean, I've saw, I saw it. He, he did two sets in Milan because he was he did his uh, his show stuff, and he did, obviously he did uh, his stuff with Wet. But I managed to see him last year as well, so I'm a, I'm pretty blessed on that front. I'm sort of all Scott Sotoed out, really. <laughs> <laughs> you can never have too much, Jeff. <laughs> no, you can't indeed. So obviously, Seven H Y is predominantly a British band. If 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 I'm going to uh, pull the flag up the flagpole, so. Yes, are you going to um, possibly pop over the pond at any time and uh, and actually uh, do some uh, do some touring with these guys? Is there anything penciled in on that front? Um, it's always possible. Uh, it's definitely something that we've talked about. Um, I've talked about it with with Alan. We've talked about it with Roy. We've talked about it with the label. Um, and so it, it's definitely on the table. It's just that we need to see how the record does. 
what kind of demand there is for it and that kind of thing. And that's kind of a bridge we'll, we'll cross when we get to it. But it's definitely on the table. It's been discussed and everybody's open to it. And actually, we're, we're all hoping it happens. So. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I mean, I, I think the guys will go down a storm um, over here. I think the market is, as I said at the beginning, is right. Certainly on the live front, uh, more and more people, certainly in the UK, are getting off their backsides and going and watching bands, which is good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how it is in the States. I, I hear different things from different people. Some people say it's um, it, it's very, very difficult to get a decent uh, gig now in the States, and other people seem to be doing okay, so it seems to be a real mixed match out there. You know, it, from my perspective, if you're a band that's been around for less than five years, you're going to have a really hard time. I think all the bands that, that do well uh, are bands that are – that were well established before um, before the internet thing really took over. Right. You know what I mean? Um, bands that that if, if you were pretty well established by the late nineties or really early two thousands, you're probably still going to do okay. Uh, if, if you were established after that, it's going to you're going to have a lot harder time of it because those are the shows people will go out and see. You know, on a really large scale. People will still go out and see Journey. They'll still go out and see Iron Maiden and things like that. And then on a smaller scale, people will still go out and see Primal Fear, you know, and things like that. But when it comes to when it comes to bands that have been around that have come around in the last ten years or so, which that's where Line of Fire falls, you know, you you, you have a harder time making any sort of uh, you know leaving any sort of mark and, and getting people to come out because. You know, I guess people already. I, you know what? I'm not even going to speculate. I don't know why that is. Um, no, I mean, you, I again, I've heard, I've heard, oh, again, all, all kinds of different sort of reasons. Maybe it's some people um, are just happy and safe in listening, as you say, to the older bands because they know what they're going to hear, and maybe people just don't want to take a chance of going out to see a new band. Which, if that is the case, then that's really sad. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. You know, that could be it. You know, that's. You know, very likely it. And for some reason, bands like, you know, w when you're talking to really big bands, I mean, I went and saw Maiden, you know, uh, a couple of summers ago, and they were fantastic. And what I'm seeing is people my age and older, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm 43, and people even younger than me are bringing their young kids to these shows. So, like, there was, like, five- and six- and seven-year-olds seeing Maiden. Cool. And five- and six- and seven-year-olds seeing Kiss. And things like that, but you know, you're not going to see five, six, seven year olds at winery dogs concerts. No, you know? they, they, they don't. They don't play the same places. And as what, speaking of the winery dogs, they're amazing and as awesome as they are, and as known as some of the members are, they just played uh, about an hour and a half from me uh, a few weeks ago, and the crowd was decent, but. It wasn't as big as you would expect, and I, I think they would probably fare better somewhere like the UK. Well, funny, I mean, you should say that. I mean, certainly, um, you know, some of the blues artists I've um, chatted to, and and I can think of one gentleman I've had on the show, which which will be Michael Caton, the blues guitarist, have said there is no market in the states for them. That's why they come to um, to Britain and Europe. That's yeah. that's where the fan base is, and that's where they get. Um, Accolade is probably not the right uh, the right word, but they certainly they get the they get the audience and they get in the sales. They get some exposure, yeah. Mm. Because I, I think you know, from what I can tell, there's there seems to be now. I, I don't obviously don't know a hundred percent, but there seems to be at least a little more of a radio market in Europe for for these these kinds of bands and even bands like Line of Fire and Seven H Y. There, I can tell you definitively, at least in my part of the country, there is no market for this kind of music. And, you know, they may play on the classic rock station. You'll hear old Night Ranger and old Journey and things like that, or even old Tom Petty or old Bruce Springsteen. But if those fans play out a new record, it gets completely ignored. That, to, me, that to me, is just bizarre. There's no radio format at all for new rock music in that vein there's just not unless it's online and there's, 
it's just it's a, it's a shame really because you know to me the classic rock station if you're going to play old journey play new journey Absolutely. I mean, if you speak to most probably people in Britain, you know, what what their perception of the States is, that it's this, uh, this huge melting pot of music and every, you know, and everything goes and everything gets played. And it's uh, it really no. isn't the case at all. No, it's heavily, heavily, heavily formatted. It's very formatted and it's all based on um, surveys and, and marketing and, and things like that. And what happens is, you take a few surveys and you think, okay, I'm going to play these same 50 songs all the time. And what the result of that is most people don't seek out new music. Mm. Most people don't really seek stuff out. They're content to just listen to whatever pops up. So if all they hear is the same stuff they've been hearing on the radio for 30 years, that's just all they're going to know. You know, and they just... It, you have to put it in front of people. If nobody's putting it in front of people, they're not going to know it's there. But you'd think it'd be the other way, wouldn't you? With it, with the uh, advent, obviously, internet and Facebook and obviously MySpace before that and, and all the rest of it, you would actually think it'd be the other way around. Yeah, you know, you would think. But, well, I think what you run into with, with the internet and, and Facebook and Spotify and things like that is it, it, seems, it seems to me now as, as someone who grew up in the you know, late 70s and early 80s, it seems to me now there is a, a lot more uh, music and entertainment in general trying to get your attention. Yeah, that's, so, that's a fair point. And we're still only, you know, single, single human beings. We only have so many hours in the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me to, about to, it. <laughs> to, to devote to watching, to watching something or listening to something or whatever game we're playing. There's only so much time. So when the time doesn't increase, the amount of time we have to spend on it doesn't increase, but the amount of stuff that we have to get through does, you're just not going to get through all of it. Yeah. And it's just, I think that's what it is. There's so many bands and so many singles and so many of all genres, not just rock. I mean, mm. so many musicians. I mean, people talk about how the internet and downloading changed everything. You know what changed everything, in my opinion, was affordable home recordings. Because now anybody that can play guitar and write a song can play that guitar, write that song, record that song in their bedroom, stick it on the internet, and he's out there with everybody else. Yeah. So that increase of that increase of product, you just can't get through all of it. No, so you can't. I mean, I, I have the classic um, presenter's disease of uh, of the fifteen second skip. Get an album <laughs> fifteen seconds onto the next track because you. you the, I mean, you shouldn't complain, but the, just the, the sheer amount of music that comes through to me either in the post or in my inbox, and, you know, and you're trying to do justice to it all, and it's, exactly. it, it's 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 hard. It's very hard. I did. I wrote reviews for a couple of websites ten years, and when I first started, I had no problem at all. I could listen to everything thoroughly and get through it and write a decent review and feel like I gave it proper attention. But as it went on, like you said, between the mail and your inbox and stuff, just you just get bombarded with stuff. I couldn't get through all of it. No. And I, I started doing like you. I, I would listen to a few songs. I'd listen to it one time, note the things that stuck out, and just move on to something else. And I noticed I wasn't giving anything any real attention. And then in doing that, you can't even listen to the stuff that you like to listen to. No, because indeed. It's you know, so it, it's crazy. There's a lot, and I realize the irony of that. Here I am putting an album out and promoting it on your show. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is not the irony is not lost on me. But you know, it's that's why, in my opinion, you have to be really grateful and really thankful for the people who are listening to you and who are taking the time to write to you, even if it's just one quick line that says, mm. "I really liked your song." If they listen to your song with all the other all the other choices out there that they have, if they took out five minutes and listened to your song or listened to my song, I mean that that's fantastic, and I really appreciate that. Well, as you know, without making you uh, wanting to make you blush, I mean I only play stuff on this show if I like it. It's pure and simple as that. <laughs>
Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you like it, man. I, I really appreciate the support that you, you, you you've supported everything I've done since I've known you. Yeah, and I'm and still I'm, waiting for the check. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's coming. Yeah, it. I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, if it's anything like uh, the the postal's um, delay from Mister Kibble, then it, yeah, it's, it's probably gonna, it's gonna, probably going to be a few weeks. <laughs> it's in the same box. Yep. <laughs> well, Sean, it's been an absolute pleasure to finally get uh, the, to speak to you in person, as it were. Um, I say the Seven H Y album. You guys out there, I'm I'm going to put my uh, put my head over the parapet and say you guys are going to absolutely love it because it is absolutely killer. Um, it is everything an album should be, and hence, Hint is on the show, and hence, obviously, Sean, you're on the show as well. Yes, my man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Thanks for the kind words. I hope really hope everybody really digs the Seven Hy record. I had a great time doing it. Alan gave me a lot of really good songs to sing, and I think it's a good varied record. And I, I think, I think if people check it out, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be into it. Well, I'm going to put. I'm going to um, sketch two things into my diary now. One that uh, hopefully you come over the pond and do some dates for them, and two that we see at some point. Um, you guys in line of fire and get yourselves together and get another album out because that'd be really cool. Oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm in 100% agreement with you on both of those things. Well, Sean, you take care, mate, and I'll speak to you again real soon. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Cheers now. Bye bye.